Hi everyone, Rebecca here. A friend of mine asked me to do a tutorial on how I print it directly to A6 DS5 DIY fish inserts. She had seen an, a, an example of mine, as you can see here in this image, of which I printed onto a pre-printed, pre-cut, and pre-hole punched piece of paper. She orders hers directly from someone who does the printing and the hole punching for her. Uh, so she needed some um, explanation on how to create a template, kind of like an overlay of sorts, that she could then run her pages through a printer uh, and have it come out with a similar design. Uh, I used an, my example in this just to kind of give you an idea a couple of ideas of what you could print on the page, but I'm going to show you how I've tweaked it since. And you can see that in the Word document that I have here in the back. And then this is an example of a blank DIY fish uh, DS5 A6 size piece of paper. So to get started, you'll need, um, I, I used a screenshot of an existing page so that I could eyeball where I'd want the layout to kind of be while I'm designing the page and it helps me to determine where on the uh, page do I want a, a particular category or something of that nature. So that was useful to have uh, available to me. Uh, then from there we'll need to open up a new Word document to get started. So click on File and New Blank Document. This will automatically launch a standard 8.5 by 11 page. I'm going to minimize this one for a moment. Um, so a lot of the changes that we're going to make right now in the beginning are based on the layout. So let's click the layout tab and then the first thing we're going to change is the page size. You have two options. You can choose between 4 by 6 or you can choose the true A6 size down below. There's not much difference in the size, it's it's minimal. So either one will work. I believe my first template was used, um, I used was based on four by six and I had no um, issues. But for this sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna use the true A6 size. From here, we'll need to change the margins. So we're gonna click the down arrow and choose the narrowest set because I'm going to customize it even further after doing so. So now everything is 0.5, but I'm going to drop these a little bit further down by clicking the down arrow. The top will be 0.4, the bottom 0.4, the right 0.4, but the left I'm going to in increase it to 0.55. And the reason for that is that each of these pages have this bar of time slots and I need, in order to not interfere with that, with the printing, I need a little bit more extra room to go past it. So I added a little bit more to the left hand margin. From there, I want to add some columns. I'm going to select two from the column drop down. And now I can begin typing. We're going to make all of our changes to font and, and um, things of that nature at the end to do them all at once. So for now, I'm just going to click into the page to begin typing. But the first thing I'm going to want to do is drop it down uh, one or two to make sure that I'm not interfering, interfering with the date that's at the top of the page. So for this example, again, don't worry about your font or your, your uh, font style or type um, size because we're going to do that at the end. I'm going to type in a few of my headers and then I'm going to insert my, uh, using the insert button, I'm going to insert some symbols. So before I do that though, I want an extra space because I want to put in a picture there. And then I'm going to hit insert symbol again and go to symbol browser. Over to the right, you may have to scroll down a little bit to get to this tick box. You don't have to put tick boxes, but I find them a useful and easy identifier. Right click, hit copy, and then edit paste. Um, again, don't worry about the font, but just tab down, put some more tick boxes, 
and then I'm going to type in due. These are things that are due today, such as work-related, bills to do, or bills that are due, uh, packages that are due in the mail, uh, things of that nature. And then I'm going to put work to do's. Hit enter, tick box, enter, tick box, enter, tick box, all the way to the end. Once I start getting to the top of the page, there we go. I'm going to hit enter to bring it down to even it out because I want this space up at the top to be left blank for the purpose of putting in my weather tracking, my um, how I was feeling that day. Those are kind of key things that the DIY fish inserts um, normally have. So I like to keep up with those kind of tracking items. For this, uh, I'd like to add a few more reminders. I'm going to put in vitamins. I'm going to put in gym, and I'm going to put in defrost dinner. And I'm going to put a tick box. I'm going to put a tick box. I tabbed over to get to it. Um, in this case, I need to do it from here because I'm going to change the font and this is going to get tweaked anyway. And then from there, I'm going to put my personal to-dos. I like my personal to-dos not to interfere with my work to-dos. And the reason for that is I want to be able to uh, use the full uh, width of the page to write my work to do if it, if I need to. So I always just put enough personal to do's where it doesn't interfere with uh, writing my work to do's. Now from here I'm going to change the font for everything and I'm going to choose from the font drop down Caviar Dreams and I'm going to change the font to 10 and as you can see I'm going to have to add some space and here now I can put in some more tick boxes and change the font on those to caviar dreams as well and I'll go ahead and bring that back up now from here, I'll underline and center if I'd like to. I do on the left-hand side, but not on the right. And then the work to do's, center, underline. And then that way, my tick boxes aren't interfering with the work to do's and I can add in a few more if I need to, uh, or even a space to kind of gap that a little bit. Now if I eyeball this together with the um, with the A6 page that I already have open it kind of lines up that I can see that that it'll it looks like it will work without interfering and then from there if you need to uh, put in an image this is the tricky part. So in the clip art, I'm going to choose balloons because I find that that is the most generic for an occasion to celebrate an occasion. And I'm going to right click and hit copy. Go over here and hit paste. Now it's going to put it as a really big image and totally messing up everything you've just done. But if you click on the image and bring that image down to the small size, you should be good to go. There we go. We're back to where we are. So now going forward, all you'd have to do is click on the file print button. For Macs, I don't know about for Windows computers. Uh, for me, it looks like it's in eight, uh, eight and a half by 11, but if I click on the page setup button, um, it automatically says it's already in A6. So I cl uh, click OK, and when it returns back to the screen, it's back in A6 format. 
Now as you can see I have a lot more space at the top so it shouldn't interfere with those date lines that I mentioned before and now it's ready to print. All you have to do is click print. I hope that um, I hope this was useful. I hope that you've learned uh, something from it. If you have any questions I'll do my best to answer. I am not an expert on Word. I'm sure that there was probably a million ways to do it easier or faster than this. Um, but like I said, I'm not an expert, but I uh, thought that this would be useful for my friend who uh, inquired about it. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see further videos from me, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thank you.